Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 6th. First up, I would like to thank three of my regular contributors, which have made the TDD Report a pleasure to deal with, especially in the year 2013. Many times I've had to call upon these people to help me, and they've come through. That's Harry T, 1954 Shadow, and Navy Thomas 8. Thank you, and even part of this show is brought to you by them. First up, this is from ArsTechnica.com. It's called Linux Powered Rifle. There's a company called Tracking Point that is made, and then the rifle's name is the, the weapon system's name is Precision Guided Firearm. And what it does is it takes a Linux computer using the, the combination of the weapon and the Linux computer and the sighting system to make an average marksman into a pretty good sniper at a thousand yards. This uh, interviewer in the article, his photographer, who had a little bit of experience with rifles, fired this for the first time and was able to easily hit 9-inch targets at 1,000 yards, which is quite an accomplishment. 1,000 yards, that's 10 football fields. So how this works is the image in the scope is actually moving at the same time that the reticle is moving, but they're moving independently. So it is a little bit difficult to line up, but once you get them lined up, you pull the trigger, and then the weapon does not fire until the computer says you're lined precisely. So you may pull the trigger, and it may take a second or two for the gun to fire, but when it fires, it is when the computer determines, based on windage, elevation, and whatever other factors it calculates into the equation, when it's the perfect time to fire the shot. And Evidently, it does seem to work. Now, this is not going to be inexpensive. They make two versions, a 300 Winchester Magnum for $17,000, and they make a 338 Lapua Magnum for $22,000. So not exactly your people, for your bu people that are budget conscious for a hunting gun, but if you do want to get one, just to let you know, they are almost completely sold out of their 2013 production of it. So if you want one, get in on it fast. Next up. This is from foxnews.com. NASA is planning on lassoing an asteroid by the year 2019. In other words, they're going to try to see if they can predict and find an asteroid approximately 25 foot in diameter, approximately 500 tons, when it's coming in our area, and they're going to use the Orion capsule to do this. So I've talked about this in the, in the past, but now there's getting a little bit more detail as the plans are coming together. Now, there's a lot of discussions and fights within the science community about should we return to the moon and... Uh, that China may end up beating us going back to the moon. But right now, there's a, a two-stage plan. First off, get good at being able to handle asteroids in outer space, which I think is a good thing. And let's do it on a small scale with a 25-foot diameter asteroid. You're talking about an asteroid that if it does enter our atmosphere, is typically going to burn up. It's smaller size than the one that went over Russia just recently in the news. So let's mess with one that's not going to really harm us too much even if it does get out of control and plunges into the Earth's atmosphere and let's get good enough and uh, even like uh, some people debated well what if it's a failure well if it's a failure we learn from it I mean it may take three or four tries before we get good at lassoing asteroids and being able to figure out how to deal with them but it's something we're only going to get one chance at if a killer asteroid is coming our way we're only going to get one shot at doing it right and we better learn how to do it right now and then the second step of the program is onward to Mars now, the Obama administration's only put up $100 million so far, which to me is kind of a pittance, but at least it's a start. They're approx they say approximately this plan may cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $2.6 billion for just this asteroid lassoing program. I would say you could probably double that. But look at it in context. Last year, people paid over $30 billion just in bank overdraft fees. So it's not a huge amount for the United States budget, and it could be something that ends up being a lifesaver to us. Next up, this is from Nature.com. Um, as you know, I'm a fan of Stephen Hawking, and uh, I was on his site about the Higgs boson thing, about the Higgs boson not existed, and I, and I lost in that argument, too. And there was a previous argument he had, too, about information and black holes and information being lost in a black hole. Some people sided with him, saying that information, once it was into a black hole, was totally lost. And then the other side was by his uh, nemesis, John Preskill, and he ended up, uh, he made the bet, I think, in about 1974, and then he ended up paying the bet off in 1997 because the calculations did show that the information is preserved. Well, there's a new set of calculations that were run, and this was run by Joseph Polchinski and two of his students saying that the event horizon may end up being a giant layer of fire on a uh, black hole. And <clears throat> if their calculations are correct, 
this could actually lead to the conclusion if it's taken a certain way to where Stephen Hawking could have been correct and maybe the bet will end up being re reversed and uh, John Prescott will have to pay him off on the bet. But anyway, if you want to read this, it's very deep into the physics and the reason why they think that this uh, fire layer happens is because of the fact virtual particles could appear, a pair of particles could appear on either side of the event horizon and if the one particle falls in to the black hole and the other particle escapes, that disentanglement that happens creates an amount of energy and because virtual particles are appearing and disappearing all over the place all the time, if it's happening all over the layer of the event horizon and the particles are escaping and the other particles are falling in, there may be a large energy release and that's what's causing Causing this fire layer. So if you get a chance, read the article over, but I tell you, if you want to try to give get an overall understanding of it, be very much up on your physics. I think still, even if you're not, there are some interesting subtopics of the article that still could be interesting, but it can be for pretty heavy reading. So if you want to uh, check it out, I think it's worthwhile to check out. And next up, I want to feature two different videos. First up, this one is from Clash 230, and uh, he did a video called Do You Moto Vlog Too Much? But in my opinion, it's more like a, a David Letterman top 10 list. And I would call it top 10 signs you may be moto vlogging too much. I feature this also because of the fact of that he, uh, one of the top, one of the numbers of the top 10 list was the TDD report he threw in there too. Took a little jab at the TDD report. And I always find that amusing when people uh, do something like that. So if you get a chance, check out his David Letterman style top 10 list of Do You Moto Vlog Too Much? And then last off, this is from my friend Bangalore Babel, and I asked people to show gadgets, even necessarily if it wasn't guess a gadget, just show a gadget that you might be, you think people might be interested in. And what he showed was bill hook blades. Um, I've called them hook blades, other people call them billy hook blades. They're basically a long, a long blade that's got a hook in the end. And I thought at first, well, you don't really see them in Western culture too much. What would they really be useful for? And as I watched his video and I did a little bit more research on them, these things really do take the place of that tool that you need when a machete won't quite work and a hatchet won't quite work. There's the, they're kind of the in-between tool, and there's some things they're very perfect at. In other words, if you're cutting at swinging vines or something like that that tends to give way or deflect off of the blade of a normal knife, with the hook at the end of these bill hooks, they tend to chop these things down a lot easier. And as I've read people's reports of their experience with it, it doesn't matter if the vine's alive or dead. If you've got a good bill hook knife that's sharpened well, it's going to work pretty great. Um, they're typically made of mild steel rather than hardened steel so that people can sharpen them in the field themselves. And because of the hook edge and the weight at the end of the blade, it's got a sweet spot that's well away from the handle so that they're much easier to use. And in his video, you can see that he does uh, not just show the knives off, he shows a little bit of how it's used for chopping too. And I imagine if you were doing quite a bit of light chopping, this would be a lot easier to hold and use for a period of time than a small hatchet. They just get heavy after a while, so I think these bill hooks would work a little bit better. But anyway, Bangalore Babel, thank you for sending in this gadget. And as usual, if anybody else has any gadgets you would like to send in, please send, send in a video if you can. Show me what the gadget's like. It doesn't have to be guess that gadget. Just a gadget you think is unusual or something that uh, is out of the ordinary people would like to see. So, hi everybody. Today I want to draw your attention on something what is very specific uh, Indian thing and uh, interestingly it seems to be nearly forgotten in continental Europe. In UK I heard it's still very common but uh, Germany also it is nearly forgotten. I'm talking about what you see here, bill hooks or in German language hippe Sessel, Gertel, or in my native place, Streubecker. You can get it uh, everywhere in any hardware store, or you go to any factory shop here, factory outlet, Indian type, and uh, here you select whatever nice instruments you want to get, and get it for quite cheap money. This tool is uh, what we use in the household for cutting coconuts, means opening coconuts or open tender coconuts and uh, for small work in the garden it is uh, also a ladies tool more or less uh, means uh, all that uh, ladies who go in the morning to get some firewood they use uh, maybe this size not the bigger one not the totally small one this is a, a very uh, tough piece very heavy one 
and uh, you see nicely from the blacksmith uh, every punch of the hammer and uh, it, it looks really nice uh, I, th I, I like it that uh, rough and tough uh, look and of course it's very sharp and uh, very useful and uh, very good for cutting wood and uh, branches uh, if you want to get some firewood in the outdoors uh, that is just the right one and uh, uh, I like uh, it has uh, it's just the right size for me and uh, this is a uh, uh, one piece of stainless steel made of stainless steel uh, uh, very good uh, very costly quality rarely to get in normal hardware stores I found it uh, in, in a market store in Uti uh, first time I saw them in, in that uh, steel quality it's a little bit thinner but uh, very very good quality and uh, of course it's uh, not so easy to sharpen like the other ones which are usually simply rubbed on any stone so this one you need really uh, uh, better technology to keep it uh, sharp once it is uh, it lost its sharpness but usually it's uh, keeping it uh, quite long so you can use it uh, very fine in the afternoon so here uh, again that collection and uh, of course people will ask oh, it's just for museum or really for use no it can be used uh, here for example to make some uh, feather wood or cutting anything you can see it uh, it's really really good and sharp and cutting very nicely and uh, we used it in uh, some 50 years back in in germany uh, for making uh, the kindles in the morning what we call in swabian language spechtele machen and uh, every household has had these things but meanwhile they are completely uh, forgotten it seems and uh, you rarely see them so anyway that's it for this week's tdd report take care everybody i will catch you next week